all know that terrible feeling, late into a sci-fi flick which until now has been a pretty solid watch. The frown, the glance to whoever is sitting next to you, and the deep inhale as you reach into your popcorn and cringe, realising that, God, they're actually going for this twist? Blame Rod Serling, blame M. Night Shyamalan, blame whoever you want. As a genre, sci-fi is a minefield for dumb last-second reversals and ambitious, often embarrassingly misjudged twist endings. The protagonist is almost always actually an alien, a robot in disguise, or her own clone, surprising the audience almost as much as it seems to surprise the filmmakers given that these twists often render the preceding movies completely pointless. In some cases, the flicks on this list weren't too bad until their closing reels and could have been salvaged by the intervention of a braver editor. Where are the infamous meddling executives when their powers could be used for good? In other cases, the twists added to these films were just the last in a long line of bad decisions and the movies were struggling long before they shot themselves in the foot as they crossed the finish line. In any case, I'm Kirsten from What Culture, and here's our rundown of the 10 sci-fi movies ruined by terrible twists. Number 10, Ex Machina, Universal Studios. Okay, so this is probably one of the most loved entries on this list, but we here at What Culture stand by Ex Machina's inclusion on here, so let us explain. Yes, Alex Garland's chilling sci-fi mystery is a tense morality play for much of its runtime, and it's a thrill to see such skillful work from Domhnall Gleeson, Alicia Vikander, and Oscar Isaacs alike. The triumvirate run the gambit from naive but likeable Caleb, to sleazy but strangely enigmatic Nathan, to doe-eyed and innocent but undeniably unsettling Ava. And the movie is often almost unwatchable as it ratchets up the tension whilst also taking time to discuss the philosophical implications of its not too inconceivable conceit. So what's it doing on this list? Well, the film makes it clear that Nathan's downfall comes from his lack of respect for the humanity of his creations. Fast forward to the ending where in a bit of effective karma he's offed by his own robots. And Caleb meanwhile is left to slowly die because he did respect their humanity? Viewed robots as human or worthy of freedom? The film is unclear on exactly why this would be a bad thing and the ending leaves a frustrating feeling of damned if you do, damned if you don't, which renders all that deep meaningful conversation pointless. Number nine, Life, Sony Pictures. This one stings a little. Since 2017's Life is actually a little underrated as an effective slice of sci-fi horror, and after a decade-long deluge of self-serious space dramas, looking at you, Gravity, Interstellar, Ad Astra, it's nice to see a couple of grunts run from a slippery space monster in their mists. Maybe Prometheus should have just cut back on the mythology, but Life was a breath of fresh air and benefited from an all-star cast who left viewers truly uncertain as to who might make it out alive and who is destined to become food for Franklin. For the most part, the flick is an effective bit of cat and mouse, with some higher wattage stars biting the bullet early on and surprisingly well-drawn characters for what is effectively an alien knockoff. However, like Ex Machina before it, the film insists on taking the most downbeat path back to Earth possible literally, and its believability suffers severely as a result. It's one thing for poor Rebecca Ferguson to be sent spiralling into space when she bounces off a bit of debris from the demolished space station, but it's truly stretching credulity to see that poor Jake Gyllenhaal has been unable to wrestle the controls from murderous alien blob Franklin, and so the alien has flown back to Earth? Alternatively, the pod found its own way back to Earth whilst Gyllenhaal was actively piloting it in the opposite direction. Despite one minor knock throwing Ferguson's into deep space. Number eight, Knowing, Summit Entertainment. Maybe we should be able to spare a little love for knowing Helmer Alex Proyas. After all, this is the man who had to finish cult classic The Crow without any star when Brandon Lee tragically died in an onset accident. Not to mention providing the inspiration for mega hit The Matrix with his underseen and underrated next film, Dark City. But he's also the director responsible for 2016's laughable flop Gods of Egypt. Remember that $140 million behemoth? Yeah, neither does anyone else. And the man who brought us Knowing's closing scenes, so maybe not. In this dark sci-fi thriller, Nick Cage plays a professor unsettled by the discovery of a list of numbers scrawled by some sprog 50 years before the film begins. The kid was asked to draw the future, and each of the numbers correlates to the date of a major catastrophe. This is, of course, helpfully proven by one of the dates being the day after Cage discovers the document, and indeed, a convenient plane crash arrives to clarify the theory. So what's causing all this premonition? Time travel? Or aliens decided to spare a pair of human children from the upcoming apocalypse via solar flare. 
It's door number three. But Preuss's film doesn't stop there. The world actually ends, leaving Cage, his love interest, and everyone else on Earth dead. Fun twist, that. Number seven, Terminator Salvation, Warner Bros. Poor, much aligned Mook G. The Charlie's Angels director finally earned himself a modicum of love from genre film fans for his bonkers 2017 horror comedy, The Babysitter. However, a decade before this project, his most expensive and ambitious flick, 2008's Terminator Salvation, was hated by both audiences and critics, who complained it managed to be both too sanitized and too dark and gritty to fit the feel of the franchise. The director did all he could to accommodate the demands of the fandom. A rookie mistake for which he paid dearly. When the original deeply cool ending was leaked on the internet a year prior to the film's release, fans were horrified to see that franchise hero John Connor would die, have his face transferred to half-droid Marcus in order to keep the resistance in high spirits, and proceeded to slaughter the rest of the resistance as Marcus was revealed as a double agent. Paranoia? Terror? This isn't what audiences want from a franchise about a robot assassin entitled Terminator. Instead, we were served the limp theatrical ending whose twist barely made any sense and was rivaled by critics and fans alike. As John lies dying, Marcus offers his own heart and sacrifices himself to save John. The twist was a flopped attempt at sentimentality which pleased no one, as reflected in the reaction to the flick upon release. Number 6. Planet of the Apes – Fox when it came time for Tim Burton to remake 60s sci-fi classic and Simpsons musical adaption fodder, The Planet of the Apes, everyone knew the original flick's iconic twist ending would need to be rebooted too. But how could the Alice in Wonderland Helmer hope to compete with the brutal revelation that the titular simian-dominated hellscape was, in fact, our very own Earth all along? Well, he couldn't. But that didn't stop the artist who brought us Beetlejuice and Edward Scissorhands from attempting to outdo the original twist, and proving he really should stick to candy-coloured gothic fairy tales set in suburban Americana in the process. This version's shoddy last-minute twist at least makes the time travel aspect of the story clearer from the beginning, but make no mistake, this clarity didn't make the ending any more comprehensible. Seeing our human hero Marky Mark travel back in time via an electromagnetic storm in order to restore normality, the ending reveals, sort of, if you fill in a lot of blanks, that Tim Roth's the villainous ape Thade travelled through the same loophole, went further back in American history, and took over the country centuries earlier. How do we know? Why, the hilarious reinvented Lincoln Memorial, of course, which now consists of Thade dressed as Lincoln and frowning over Washington, D.C. All this, and no one even utters the phrase Ape Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Bananas. Number 5. Screamers Adapted by Alien and Return of the Living Dead scribe Dan O'Bannon from a story by a Scanner Darkly author and psychedelic sci-fi legend Philip K. Dick, also wrote the source story for a little film called Blade Runner, Screamers had plenty of credentials when it hit the multiplex in 1995. Unfortunately, despite starring former Robocop Peter Weller and securing the talents of Scanner's sequel director Christian Dugway, the film failed to wow audiences, flopping hard at the box office. This failure to connect was no doubt thanks in part to its derivative narrative, but it wasn't helped by the flick's laughable last second twist. After endless double crosses, courtesy of the titular killer androids, who are designed to assume the form of humans and blend in among them, our hero loses his love interest in a final battle but nonetheless defeats the robots. He leaves the planet forlorn but successful and then we see his teddy bear move by itself. Yes, you heard that right, a sentimental souvenir teddy bear which he brought aboard is in fact one of the eponymous killer robots. It's enough to make all three foot nothing of Chucky look scary. Number 4. Mulberry Street Mulberry Street helmer Jim Mickle has gone on to bigger and better things in the years since his inauspicious debut such as underrated neo-noir Cold in July and cannibal horror slash family drama We Are What We Are, but we here at What Culture are still certain the director must be a bit annoyed by all the positive critical attention heaped on Frank Darabont's 2007 Stephen King adaption The Mist. Yes, The Mist might have flopped to the box office, but the flick has nonetheless gone on to become a cult classic thanks to its remorselessly bleak, unforgettable ending. However, Mulberry Street, released only a year earlier on the indie circuit, features a remarkably similar ending. Unfortunately for Mr. Mickle, said twist doesn't work in Mulberry Street, and it may be due to the film's, uh, 
interesting choice of villain? Yes, okay, so humans transforming into rats is in theory a terrifying idea, and the flick does manage to keep its monsters in the dark long enough to queue up some effective scares. But when the ending rolls around and our heroes are forced to off their remaining loved ones, it's hard to take the film seriously. So the revelation that the infected humans return to normal after sunrise plays a lot more like a silly punchline than anything as tragic as the Miss Gut Punch Coda. Number 3. Carnosaur Ah, Carnosaur. This 1993 sci-fi horror adventure will always have a certain place in the hearts of viewers who wanted a Jurassic Park knockoff with a lot more gore and admittedly far less convincing dinos. And it's a testament to the power of B-movie super producer and Tinseltown legend Roger Corman that the flick is still fondly remembered despite being, for all intents and purposes, one of the earliest pre-asylum mockbusters. Yes, the flick was despised by critics, with Roger Ebert going so far as to single it out as the worst film of 1995. But Ebert also hated Silent Night, Deadly Night, so it's fair to say some flicks were simply too sophisticated for his taste, and Carnosaur is still a guilty pleasure decades later. That is, if you ignore its brutally nihilistic and tonally bizarre our ending. After a series of increasingly goofy and undeniably fun action sequences, raptors rip their way through a town, mad scientist gives birth to a super dino monster, our hero finally secures the safety of the film's small Nevada town by creating an antidote to the scientist's experimental super virus and injecting his infected love interest with it. That's when the government arrive, immediately killing our hero and his love interest and dumping their bodies in a fire. The end. Now there's an ending that certainly says something about society. Number 2. Repo Men There's not a lot of love going spare for Repo Men, the 2010 Jude Law vehicle from one and done director Miguel Sapochnik. Well, he's got himself a Tom Hanks builds himself a robot buddy after the apocalypse flick coming out this year, but not too many people seem excited about that one either. Co-starring Forrest Whitaker and I Am Legend's Alice Braga, the flick attempted to bring back the grisly sci-fi satires of the 80s, owing a debt to both Alex Cox's cyberpunk black comedy Repo Man and the world of Robocop helmer Paul Verhoeven during the era. Maybe the flick simply didn't have the same scalpel sharp wit as its predecessors. Maybe the thought of repo men ripping organs out of those unable to repay their transplant costs was simply too close to home for some American viewers. Have you seen the state of their healthcare system? Mostly though, the misjudged ending cost the flick any goodwill it had accumulated among audiences and made its failure almost inevitable. The movie has a barnstorming, action-packed final act, filled with brutal kills and tense chases, eventually ending with a happy conclusion for Law and his love interest. Psych! None of that actually happened, and Law's character has been in a coma since his mate knocked him out an hour into the flick, linked up to a neural network where he can live out a fantasy life as he remains unconscious. Number 1. The Happening Yes, alright, so including M. Night Shyamalan on this list is almost as obvious as throwing a Mario Barber effort onto a list of the best Giallo movies. But the Achur did actually pull off some effective reveals back in his heyday, with the likes of Unbreakable and in particular The Sixth Sense truly wowing audiences before The Village sent everything spiralling. And Spiral Shyamalan's career did, eventually leading to this atmospheric mystery in 2008. Grounded in what seems like pretty recognisable reality, the film boasts an incredibly effective opening sequence wherein random civilians become inexplicably compelled to off themselves in all manner of gruesome ways. It's shockingly intense for a PG-13 movie, and the slowly mounting unease, in contrast with the hyper-intense opening of Zack Snyder's then-recent Dawn of the Dead remake, can be seen to influence everything from Netflix's viral hit Bird Box to the slow burn opening act of Jordan Peele's Us. So why did we all forget the film as if it were an embarrassing write-off immediately after release? Because of the last real howler of an explanation for what's driving this epidemic of mysterious suicides. Namely, it's the nefarious machinations of plants, who are driving people to off themselves as revenge for humanity's damage to nature. Yes, really. Okay, can we go back to ignoring this one? Carry on, everyone. And that's our list. What's some of the worst twists you've ever seen in a movie? Leave us a comment below and let us know. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button and check out our other videos. I've been Kirsten from What Culture, and I'll see you in the next one.